So we've looked at building web applications with the JavaScript API and native applications with the runtime SDKs. And when you're building these applications, you're increasingly building multiple applications to solve a, and build a solution. And it's important as a developer that your users have the similar user experience on all the different applications. And that starts with the map. It's really important that maps look and feel the same no matter the device that they're running on or the API that has been used to build them. And for that, we have the cartographic information model. The cartographic information model, or otherwise called SIM, is used by Pro and is used by Runtime, and it has been for a number of years. But just recently, we've added SIM support directly into the JavaScript API so that your symbology will look the same no matter which developer technology you use to build your solution. In addition, we also have a thing that we refer to as a dictionary style. This allows you to build very flexible and advanced cartography, but very efficiently so it performs great no matter the device you're running on. So to show us the sim along with dictionary styles, please welcome Kerry from the Runtime team. Kerry. Thanks, Ewan. When styling features in maps and scenes, you often need to convey information from several attributes in a single symbol. If we examine this feature here, it's being styled based on the US military symbol standard 2525 delta. And every aspect of the symbol is a characteristic that's driven by its data. A military analyst would be able to look at the symbol and understand what it is without having to click on it to find out more information. So for example, the blue color indicates that it's friendly. The rectangular shape indicates that it's a land unit, so army. The icon in the middle indicates that it's rotary wing, so a helicopter. And then the dashed line for the frame indicates that it's planned or anticipated to be in this location. If I were to update any of these attributes, like if I change it from planned to present, it gets reflected immediately in the symbol, so we now see a solid line for the frame. I could try and use a unique value renderer to style this data based on several attributes, but as the number of fields increase and the number of values increase, it becomes very impractical to create, manage, and access the potentially hundreds of thousands of different unique symbols. So the dictionary symbology approach provides a more optimized solution for complex symbology because it connects your data to a dictionary. And a dictionary is special. It includes both a lookup table of all the possible symbol parts, and it includes a rule engine with the clever logic to evaluate the features data and then determine which of those symbol parts to piece together into a final symbol that it draws on the map. So let's see how we've done this here in ArcGIS Pro for this layer. First, we use the dictionary renderer. Then we tell it which dictionary to use. And ArcGIS provides dictionaries out of the box for the US and NATO military symbol standards. I'll include uh, 2525 delta. And then I tell it how to map to my data. So I map the actual fields in my data to the fields that the dictionary is expecting. And I can also give it some configuration properties. So in this case, I'm going to turn the text off. And now we can also give it a scale factor, which can be a specific value, or it can be an expression that gets evaluated. So dictionaries are modeled as dictionary styles in ArcGIS. If we take a look at the one that we're using now, first we can look at that lookup table in the style management window. And there's over 3,000 entries in here of those individual symbol parts, ranging from the icons to the frame and the color and the text. And each one of those has a unique key. And I'll come back to that in a minute. I can query the style for all of the icons of type tank. And as I look through these, we can see the details on the right-hand side. ArcGIS Pro's cartographic information model gives us advanced control over every aspect of the symbol, so I can make sure that it looks exactly right. Now, the other part of the dictionary style is the rule engine. And this is written using an arcade expression language. And it sits inside that style alongside this uh, uh, lookup table. So if we take a look at the script for this same style, first, it evaluates the features data and looks at those configuration properties, goes through several conditional statements, and then returns a set of keys. And those keys are the unique keys that I pointed out earlier in the lookup table. And that's all the renderer then needs to piece together that final symbol that it draws on the map. 
So now we have a better understanding of what dictionary symbology is. What does it mean to you as developers of web and native applications? If I want to package together my data and the symbology exactly as I've authored it, I can use the new mobile map package tool. And that takes the map, the layers, the data, and the symbology and puts it together in a single portable file that can be used in any ArcGIS runtime-based application. So here's a simple app that we've written using the runtime SDK for .NET. And it's drawing that mobile map package that includes that style embedded within. So as a developer, I didn't need to write any additional lines of code to style the data. We've supported dictionary symbology in ArcGIS Pro and in runtime for some time now. But what's new is that it's, we support it in the JavaScript API as well. And I'll show you how that's done. So back in ArcGIS Pro, I've already published my data as a web map. What's new as of the most recent release of ArcGIS Pro last month is the ability to publish your dictionary style as a web style. This makes your dictionary available as a web resource for your JavaScript applications. So now I'm in a browser. I'm looking at the same data, styled the same way, but using the dictionary renderer in the JavaScript API. And the code is really simple. So first, I create my map, and I give it to my map view. And I create my dictionary renderer, specifying the URL of that web style that I published earlier. I can do the field mapping so it knows how to connect to my data and give it some con configuration pro uh, properties. Then I create my layer, and I tell it to use that dictionary renderer that I just created. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm super excited to tell you about this because some of you have been asking for this capability for some time. But the other exciting thing is that this isn't limited to military symbols. You can configure and customize dictionary styles to meet your own workflows. So you can either take an existing uh, military style that we've provided and modify it for your own needs, or you can create a new dictionary style uh, from scratch. And this is an example of one that we've created from scratch to show you an example of how to do it, and it's depicting uh, alternative fuel stations. So it's showing the station name, the connection type, the fuel type, and the network type, all in a simple symbol that's easy to understand for the users of this application. So I'm really interested to see how you might be taking advantage of dictionary symbology for your own workflows, whether you're working in ArcGIS Pro or building apps for the JavaScript or uh, runtime APIs. And in fact, I think there might be an opportunity, Ewan, for a cool new trending hashtag. Um, I've been thinking about this for a little while, and I think I've got a catchy one that we might use. Catchy. Um, nice and catchy. I'm thinking maybe uh, hashtag ArcGIS Arcade Dictionary Web Stylin. I think everybody can remember this, right? So see if you can remember it and use it uh, to let us know how you think you can use dictionary symbology in your workflows.